Welcome to the Tennessean Newsroom. I'm Dwayne Gang, and of course, this is Monday and our weekly look at politics in Tennessee. I'm joined by Michael Cass, one of our politics reporters, and we're going to talk a little bit about the shakeup or the, the, the new Davidson County Election Commission. Give us a rundown on where we stand. There's some new members on the, com the commission. It's, it's a five-member body, three Republicans, two Democrats. What, what do we know? Well, um, a few weeks ago, the uh, Democrats voted to, Democratic state legislators voted to um, uh, remove Eddie Bryan or not reappoint him and, and put Tricia Hertzfeld in instead, and A.J. Starlin got reappointed. Then uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the three Republicans who have been on the commission all for at least four years um, found out that they would not be returning. Uh, one of them, Lynn Greer, told me he, he didn't want to come back, but uh, I think the other two definitely did. Um, but uh, the, uh, the Republican delegation from Davidson County, uh, Speaker Harwell and Senators Dickerson and Hale, um, uh, announced last week that they were putting uh, former councilman and state representative Jim Gatto on the election commission um, along with two attorneys uh, Ronald Buchanan and Jennifer Lawson so once the state election commission approves those nominations uh, four of the five members of the Davidson County Election Commission will be new and let's see, let's give people a sense for you know Davidson County is traditionally a Democratic county, but the Republicans have the majority on the election commission. So let's just remind people exactly why that is. Well, Republicans took control of the state legislature in uh, the fall of 2008. Uh, so uh, the following um, January, all the county election commissions went from majority Democrat to majority Republican. Um, Lynn Greer then became the chairman of the Davidson County Commission and um, has done that for the past four years, but now he right. and the others are moving on for whatever reason. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter what the, the makeup of a specific county is or even that county's delegation in, 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 the, in the state house. It has to do with who over controls the overall uh, legislature, gets right. that majority on the, the local election. Yeah, I mean, Davidson County's um, legislative delegation is 11 or 12 to three uh, Democrat, uh, but um, all 95 county election commissions are majority Republican. And, and why should people kind of pay attention to what, ele to, to, to election commissions? I mean, these are the people that kind of ensure the integrity of the vote. That's right, and, um, and also they, they sometimes uh, try to do things that are controversial, like the recent move to, um, to try to check the citizenship status of foreign born voters. Uh, which made a lot of people upset and ultimately got rescinded um, upon the, uh, the legal advice from Metro. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, nationally um, voting rights are a, a hot topic right now and, and you've got some efforts um, that, are, that are very controversial because liberal groups say that um, these are attempts to suppress certain votes and so it's a, it's a thing to Right. Keep an eye it, on it. It may not be the most high profile body, but definitely an important one. Right. Right. All right, Michael, I appreciate giving us an update on All what's right. the latest is on the Davidson County Election Commission. All right. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Uh, we're going to turn next to um, uh, Chaz Sisk, our State House reporter, and he, we're going to kind of just get a quick update on what we're kind of looking at, uh, or actually some big news last week uh, in terms of uh, Governor Haslam and his school voucher plan. Uh, Chaz, thanks for being here. What uh, it kind of Give us a, it kind of fell apart. I mean, this was a pretty high profile initiative that the governor wanted to pursue and now he's withdrawing it. What, what, what kind of, how, how did it all come about? Yeah, it was definitely a high profile initiative. I think there's a little bit of debate over how much the governor really wanted to pursue it. His hand was kind of forced on this a couple of years ago. Um, and he formed a, a study commission, spent about a year, initially said he wasn't, um, he wasn't really going to present a plan, he got, a little, got a little heat for that, and then came out with a plan in January for vouchers that was, that was fairly limited. And, and what, what were some of the reasons why he kind of withdrew and said he's not going to pursue uh, this voucher plan? Yeah, I mean, this was kind of a, a, a textbook uh, study in brinksmanship. I mean, the governor was saying, you know, after all this work, after I've done all this, this absolutely is the plan that, that we're going to go forward with. Uh, there were a lot of people in the state legislature who wanted a far more expansive plan, uh, particularly over in the state Senate. And, um, you know, really, ultimately, the governor just said, uh, I'm, I'm not going to allow any amendments on this. And... Um, 
you know, he, he, you know, he said, we've, we've done the work on this. We think this is the best plan. And, and if somebody wants to run something different, they can, they can run it themselves. Right. We're not going to have a part in it. And, and was it some of the more conservative members of the Senate uh, wanted a, a more expansive, so they wanted the vouchers to be able to apply to more? Um, more people? Yeah, more people, just about just about any way of measuring it. The governor's plan was very much targeted on uh, the on the poorest children in the in the worst performing schools. Um, the uh, the alternative plan that was put forward, kind of on the other end of the spectrum, would have been families making as much as seventy five thousand for a family of four uh, would have applied to parents regardless of what, what schools their kids were in previously. Um, there were some differences in terms of whether schools could charge extra tuition on top of the vouchers. Um, so it was really a very a much a much more expansive plan. Now they said they were willing to walk back from a lot of that stuff and just wanted to make some some subtle changes to the bill, but the, the governor felt like you know his bill shouldn't be the vehicle for right. that. And of course we're into April and we're running out of time in the session. Any chance that we might see a voucher bill still move forward? Well, the the leadership in the in the in the House and the Senate are saying no, and that that probably kills it for the year. If they if they if they say no, then 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 it doesn't seem very likely. Um, you know, there may be some attempts to to, to amend legislation, but um, it would be it would be tough to, to to get those amendments added or passed over the objections of the leadership. Okay, sounds good, Chaz. Thanks for the update on on that voucher plan. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, you can catch uh, Chaz on on Twitter at Chaz Sisk, and of course on Tennessean.com and our In Session Politics blog for all the latest from up the street at the State House. I'm Dwayne Gang. Thanks for watching.